Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Mondays with Martin. As you know, we are choosing the content of the episode based on your questions. And today we are talking about track testing, which was asked in a question by Bartol, which makes him the winner of a few pieces of the C2 that came loose after the crash testing. So congratulations on these parts that you are going to win, Bartol. Enjoy them. I hope you have a nice place for them on your uh, shelves. Today with me here is Matija Renic, our head of powertrain and electrical architecture. Hello. Hey, Matija. Welcome. Thanks. Matija, can you please introduce yourself, what you and your team are doing here? Yeah. So I'm covering powertrain and electrical architecture, plus all the testing related to, to these two topics. Uh, also, my responsibility recently, since, since recently, is also the uh, proto-assembly team. So let's say I have full responsibility on the, on the track testing, organization of the track testing and everything related to it. Okay, so can you tell us, like, generally, how does track testing work? So usually I would divide it maybe in three phases. So first of all, we have to prepare. So there is preparation phase, and there is test execution uh, phase where we actually test on the, on the track and also data processing, which comes, comes afterwards. So you first like decide what to test, like make a plan, what the different cars would do. Then you go to the track, try to execute the plan and fix issues along the way. Mm -hmm. And then later take all the data that you have generated and try to make something useful out of it. Yes, exactly like that. Can you explain us how a typical day in testing looks like? Mm -hmm. So we usually gather early in the morning and very important thing is briefing. So we gather all the people involved in testing. Also, if in some cases we have some media people or any other guests on the test, it's very important that we brief everybody about everything that's going to happen that day. So that also means we have to brief everybody about the safety things, uh, to pay attention about uh, cars going different ways. Uh, also roles, responsibilities. Everybody needs to know what's, what's their role for the day. So we start like that. Then we basically through the, through the day we execute the test, gather data and also important part is the briefing where we go through the results of the day. Uh, we figure out what was successful, what was not and we basically briefly plan the, the next day. So that's usually how, how it goes. The safety is quite important because as we know sometimes things go wrong yeah, and well. we even have in one of these testing facilities we had a crash of one of our cars yeah. <laughs> hitting another or they, they collided uh, with another Italian sports car. Yeah, so you would say that something like that is not possible but things happen. <laughs> yeah, it happens, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so who are the guys who are actually doing the testing? who has which responsibilities? Mm -hmm. So we have basically a core team which consists of four people. So there is a test lead, so he is responsible for everything that's happening. So all the information goes through him. He makes decisions during the day if something, uh, something happens, some circumstances happen. Uh, then we have a test driver. Of course, he's driving the car and the communication be between the test lead and test driver is very important to us. Also, for the safety perspective, so test lead has to inform test driver about everything what's happening on the car or what, what are the differences, what's, what's changing, what, what do we want to achieve with the test. Then we have uh, support technicians. So we usually have one wiring technician and one uh, mechanical technician. So these guys are basically then fixing uh, the, the car if something happens with it. They are, uh, they are they're responsible also to mount all the testing equipment on the car and actually whatever it takes, change tires and update the software else. Yes, necessary. update the software and whatever else. Um, is needed actually there. But then on top of that, we also have, let's say, guests. Or in some cases, we have test engineers, which, which come and do some tuning of, let's say, torque vectoring or traction control or whatever, whatever else is needed. So we are testing our cars for quite some time. I mean, this car is uh, over one and a half years now being tested. And uh, as we are building more cars, more and more tests are happening in parallel. So what have we tested so far and what are we testing at the moment right now? So it's very important to say that we are doing testing in loops. So that actually means that, uh, for instance, we were, we were testing traction control and torque vectoring last week, but we are going to test it also in, in two weeks time again. Uh, so it's very important that, that we do these iterations where we, where we actually test what we developed, we figure where we are, we analyze the data, we do some improvements and then we, we test again. So I would say whatever tests we already, already did, there is still a lot of testing going on, a lot, a lot of things to, to come uh, in a way that, that we already tested. So like my feeling is that in the beginning we were doing like the basics, like 
with these cars, for example, the uh, suspension kinematics and uh, general powertrain and cooling. But now we are testing the more, let's say, detailed things like uh, air conditioning, uh, hot weather, cold weather, um, NVH, like yeah. it's getting more and more, let's say, sophisticated, right? Yeah, so we, in the first place, we are making sure that we have a good passive car and we, we have to make sure that everything works. Now we are entering more a phase where we have to fine tune the stuff uh, to, to make sure that everything is according to what we want. Mm. And where are we currently, where would you say, out of 100% of testing, uh, how far did we come? Maybe 60%. <laughs> that's conservative. <or? laughs> yeah, that's very conservative. Okay, yeah. Still, still some testing left. <laughs> yeah. But now comes the more fun and fun testing because at the beginning, when the car starts to drive, it's still very rough. It's unreliable. Uh, you start testing something and something else breaks. I don't know. You try to do acceleration runs, but you have a problem with the sensor, so you can't continue. And stuff like this happens all the time. But as the project continues, the car gets more mature and gets more reliable and has more performance. So the tests become more and more interesting, I would say, at yeah. least for me when I try yeah. the car. <laughs> yeah, we always make sure that you have some fun in the car when you're testing it. <laughs> yeah. And lots of spare tires behind it. Yeah. <laughs> Now we are going to have a couple of questions from Bartol, who, mm -hmm. who is the guy who won the, the part. Guy. Yeah, the lucky guy <laughs> this time. So one of his questions was, if we do adjustments to the car right on spot at the track, or we transport it back to HQ where we repair or, or do something mm -hmm. to the car? So as part of preparation for tests, uh, we, we are always preparing the car uh, for the tests that we have to do. So in some cases, this, this means that we have to disassemble a good part of the car to change some parts, to update some parts to the maturity of the, of the, of the tests that we have to perform. Like changing springs or... Springs or, or some, some components. Steering rack. Yeah, or, or components of the powertrain or something like that. Which is a big change. Yeah, yeah. big change. And, but when we, once we are on the track, all the modifications that we have to do, we do it directly on the track. So in most of the cases, I would say then during the testing, we are actually we are performing all the changes, all the tuning, everything on, on track. So we plan in a way that the big things happen before the car goes to the track. Yeah. And then in the track, maybe we, we change some small, small stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. Unless something breaks. Yes. <laughs> or then, somebody hits the wall. Then we, all, yeah. then we again try to fix everything on spot because we don't want to lose time. And that's why we have a... Lots of duct tape. Lots of duct tape. <laughs> but that's, that's why we also have technicians there, which, which can actually do stuff there and uh, fix car very, 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 very fast. But in some cases, unfortunately, we have to send it back in. Yeah. Bartol's second question is, if we receive the data immediately um, and the engineers get the, the data uh, remotely or they have to go to the track and uh, be there while the test is happening to understand what's going on. Yeah, so actually we do both. So they receive live data over our OEM dashboard or M2M system. So this is really useful for both people on track where we can actually see live data while the car is driving but also with people in headquarters or you. You often check things and uh, give some comments about how we are actually testing, how we are using the car. But also some, some parts of testing, some, some parts of gathered data uh, is, is very huge or is not part of M2M system. So in this case, we upload that uh, after every day. Uh, so immediately next morning after testing on our servers, all the data is there so engineers can check it immediately. That's something I would really like to highlight and that's really important, uh, especially to me, is when you build up a company, what I was trying was not just replicate what other companies are doing, but try to improve not just the product and the technology, but also the processes. So one of the things that we are doing is, for example, uh, streaming the data from all the cars uh, in real time, wherever they are, to our servers. And that enables us to be more uh, flexible and, and faster with some things. So the, the usual way how it would work is that you have a data recording device in the car and that stores the data in the vehicle. And then the people who are there, they need to download it with a USB stick and put it in some folders in some, uh, I don't know, physical laptop or whatever, and then send it via email and so on. We developed from the beginning a system where data is shared to, to the cloud and anybody can have access to it. So in a usual company where a test would probably take weeks to cascade through the ranks from the test team to the engineering team and so on until it reaches the management, 
here in our case it's immediately so i'm watching all the time what's going on um, and i maybe sometimes notice something that you know a battery cell is behaving strangely or like um, a temperature is uh, is uh, suspicious or oh you said that you will test these things but i didn't see it in the data guys what's going on um, so i can have this immediately and i don't have to bother them if i want to know something uh, i can go there and see immediately without wasting their time without calling them without sending them emails or whatever so that's a super useful system and it's very useful for us we can see actually what you're doing with the car <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i send to murgut sometimes our test driver like I'm watching you. Here. <laughs> I, see. I see the data. <laughs> different cars are built for different purposes. So this car was a really early car. So if you would see inside, you would see that the car is like slapped together um, because the interior quality is not important for the first cars. But as the development process continues, the car becomes more sophisticated, better quality and so on. So also the things that are maybe not fixed in this car, they are properly done in the cars that we currently make. And some cars have a very specific purpose. So they would go straight from the production line to the crash testing without driving a single meter, while other cars will never be crashed like this one. But some cars are being tested uh, for a few, so they, they get built and they are like perfect finished cars. Then they get tested for different kinds of um, test uh, scenarios for whatever we need them and then get crashed so you also have a plan right for all of these cars that are um, there's a very detailed day by day plan for every car like it has to be built in that day with that let's say maturity it gets tested three days this two days that then this 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 and in the end it gets crash tested for homologation, right? Yeah, actually, so the plan is very condensed. As you said, there are milestones like crash testing. So we try to build everything around that and make sure that we test everything that we have with the fleet of the vehicles that, that, that we have. So it's, it's really time consuming part, uh, properly planning everything. And it's something that changes a lot. So circumstances change a lot also during the project, but also the results of the tests. So it's a live document, let's say, that we have to update uh, very often. And also track testing is just, I mean, it's a big part of the testing, yeah. but it's not everything. You have crash testing, you have uh, component testing, system testing, um, environmental testing. So it's, it's a lot of other tests that are not on the track. So that's maybe something that people wouldn't realize how much testing is going on around the driving itself. So driving itself is just one thing that we do on the track and on the road and so on. But there's so many other tests that we are doing and that are necessary to be done to make sure that the car uh, does everything that we want and fulfills the homologation requirements and so on. So we are talking here a lot about testing on the track, but this is not a race car. Yeah. So obviously most of the time it should be used on the road and on a, not on the track. So why are we testing so much on the tracks? First thing is safety, so you have to make sure that everything we do is, is, is safe because maturity of all the components when you start testing is, is not there yet. So for instance, for the brakes or steering system, so you have to make sure that, that everybody conducting the, the, the test is actually safe. But it also gives us, uh, track testing gives us better opportunities. So it's easier to test some things on the test track where you have more confidence that nothing bad will happen and that nobody, uh, basically nobody will affect it in a way. So also we do it on special tracks. It's not just on the race track like Grobnik is. We are doing it in, for instance, in Nardo. A proving grounds. Proving grounds, yes. So there you have basically whatever you wish for. Yeah, you rough have special roads, pavements, yeah. you have rough roads, you have uh, slippery, slippery surface. So basically everything. Driving through deep water, yeah. salt water, Water. Yes, so what, whatever you need actually is there. So that's that's the reason why we say, okay, we are doing track testing. And you have the other infrastructure there, like a garage and uh, uh, fast charging stations. Yes, all you can stuff. change tires, you can, everything is there, Wi-Fi all over the place. Yeah. And it's, it's really nice. So we are testing uh, in many different locations at the same time. Right now we are testing in Nardo, in Italy, at the big proving grounds that actually owned by Porsche. And we would love to share videos uh, with you from there, but because there's so many prototypes driving around, they are not allowing us or anybody to make videos because you would unveil a prototype of other companies. Uh, but instead of sharing video footage, we can go to my office and uh, share the data that we are getting live from the cars and have a look what the guys are doing.
Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Seems like the guys are having some fun in Ardo. Of course, they always do. Yeah, so we can see here some interesting stuff. So you can see at the beginning of the day, they were going around the big oval, what Nardo is famous for, so big round circle with a constant radius. And we can see here that they did 230, 240 constant, mm -hmm. which is the maximum allowed speed in Nardo. Yeah. Unless you book the whole track for yourself, then you can go any speed you want uh, or you feel comfortable with. But here we can see they did some constant speed test and then later, they were driving on the handling course where they were testing, I guess, some kind of uh, handling of the car. And the great thing about this is that we now see everything that's going on in real time and we can look into any kind of data, see what the car is doing, any part of the car. And it's super user friendly so that even I as a <laughs> CEO, the stupid CEO can uh, look at the data without having to bother the engineers to ask questions. So this is how I watch remotely what you guys are doing, but how are you using this when you're on the track? Basically, it's the same thing. What we have, we just tick a box and we get the live data. So we usually stand by the track and we watch the live data while the car is running on track. Mm. So basically, with some couple of seconds of delay, we see everything what's happening on the car. And usually that would have to be in a way that somebody's sitting in the, in the car, plugged into the uh, laptop uh, on the passenger seat and watching the uh, information now, you can just do it in real time. Do it remotely and also from safety perspective is also good. You need people or equipment inside the car, uh, which, is, which is not necessary at the moment. So the engineers can be here on a meeting and like instead of being at the track and monitoring all the data there in real time, they can just be here, do their work and in five minutes see everything that's going on and go back to their work. Yeah, and also if some issue is happening, you just pick a phone or pick up a phone and say to guys, please check something is happening with motor speed or something is happening with, I don't know, temperature of one of the sensors, please check what's happening and give us some advice. And the same data is then fed to the mobile app of the owners, but we also use the same tool to send software updates to our cars, uh, over the air updates. So this is of course not just useful for uh, development, but also uh, remote diagnostics and lots of data that's coming in, uh, data analysis that can tell you predictive maintenance information. Yep. So you might notice here based on some data that things are about to go wrong before they actually go wrong uh, and it helps us then in the field. That's it for this uh, Monday's episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Mattia, Welcome. for being part of it. Um, and as always, this is based on your questions that you sent us uh, for the previous videos. So please comment on this video, send us your questions and we will deliver you the content you want to see for the future episodes. Thank you for watching and see you next time.